you throw a tomato at her when she oh it's a vampire catch a vampire which she catches purely on reflex she shakily brings it to her mouth and sucks out the juice leaving behind the carcass of a vegetable fruit what are those things called again she's a catch a vampire she wipes the remains off of her face hey man thanks for the i knew it hey man thanks for the help i used to love that cartoon when i was a kid i thought i was a goner there i guess i've forgot to eat again wait have you have i seen you somewhere before um i don't think so Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you're from the reality TV show about horrors. No, I'm not. <laughs> it takes you a second to recover. I'm actually the paranormal investigator you guys hired. Her eyes widen. I swear I didn't do it. Yeah. Do what? The murder. Officer, please don't arrest me. I have a family. My son just got into kindergarten. It was all for the kids, I swear. I swear. You what? She breaks into laughter and takes a little while. It takes a little while to calm back down. She wipes a tear from her eye. Oh man, that was a good. <laughs> no, it wasn't. You should see your face. <laughs> I was just kidding. I know why you're here, officer. So I just ask me whatever. What my favorite color is? My favorite kind of food. Red. Well, what's your name? Oh, I'm Iris. But if you want, I can also tell you about. It's okay. I think I can take over from here. Where to start? Hans. So where do you think Hans is now? Probably in the library, no? Nope. Shake your head. I was just there and he was nowhere to be found. The nerd. Was it in the library? She looks disappointed. Man, we agreed to make... To meet there to make him a new costume, though. And to my fix my... She cuts herself off. Uh, I mean, anything else you want to know? Well, at least she kept that one calm. Tomatoes! This is kind of off topic, but why do you eat tomatoes in such a weird way? She stifles a laugh. Because I'm a vampire! Oh, here we go. Lazy fangs. It's like lazy bones, but it's lazy fangs. Did anyone else hear that typewriter? Or nobody heard the typewriter. Don't ask about the typewriter. <laughs> you try hard not to look surprised, but film is really... Wait, wait, wait. You're a vampire? She's a ketchup vampire, obviously. What did you think I was? You look down. A zombie? I thought she was a zombie at first, too. Iris still won't stop laughing. Should I ask about capes? Yes. I thought vampires were capes. She gave a long sigh. I'm all about the cape life, but... But... She looks down. Mine got too many stains, so... Ah. Uh, she seems embarrassed. Maybe switch topics. That's all we got. Well, I guess that... At this point, I'm just kind of confused about where I should go. I mean, so far my only lead was a bus. You stop talking midway and you spot the cat from where oh, we're going to chase it. The two of you make co eye contact and it immediately starts running. Sorry, Iris. It's nice meeting you, but I gotta run. Uh, okay. You're already sprinting before she can finish the rest of her thought. She probably knew where Rose was and I just took off running after the dang cat. Quick save. Ah! We're so focused on telling, get it, the cat, hmm. the cat, as you've lost track of where you were, you are. Not only that, but that feline is nowhere to be seen. Drat. You start to wander off in the hopes of finding a familiar face. Mara, Iris, Joan, even Seba, which would be a welcome sight right now. Continue to sulk as you me meander around the mansion, until eventually you start to hear the very faint sound of someone singing. Your feet move unconsciously, and before you know it, you're standing in front of a large door. It has a rusted metallic finish and is slightly ajar. I keep looking for the cat. You shrug and pull out the earbuds that Joan packed for you, opting in for some of your own music while you look for the cat instead. You barely start to walk away when someone calls out to you. Now I'm good. Hold on! You pause and glance behind you to let them catch up. Hey, thanks for waiting for me. Oh, who are you? You're the paranormal investigator, right? That's actually the first time get someone guessed right. It's because he's psychic. He's a psychic merman. Yes, I am. Well, it's nice to finally meet you. I'm sure that you're probably tired of wandering around the mansion for so long. So why don't I try to answer your questions before you ask? I, so, I see no, no reason why not. Okay, well to start off with, my name is Murr, and I am the resident siren. Oh, he's trying to bait me in and kill me. 
Idol, idol. Nice. Okay. Lame. Right. Go. And I'm going to ignore whatever that just was. As for Hans, I heard some movement from the library earlier. I was already there. I went inside to maybe s see if maybe he was rolling around, but there wasn't anyone there. That's pretty weird. I went there earlier as well, but all I found was your stomach grumbles loudly and Murr laughs softly. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Maybe we should take a break from finding Hans to find you some food instead. You give an embarrassed nod. Yeah, where my food at? Maybe it's because he's a siren, but you feel so relaxed while talking to Murr. Instead of focusing on directions, you follow his lead and just keep us up the conversation. Before you know it, you reach your destination and he waves goodbye. Saying he'll catch up later after his workout, you reluctantly say farewell before entering the kitchen. See you, nerd. Mikasa S. Tukasi, yes, you. Alright, cool. Hans. Murr, please try off. I hate mopping the kitchen regards peril. You walk in on Joan eating some cookies. She quickly hides them behind her back. Ah, a long time no see. I was just looking for you. It, it's a very urgent manner, matter. That's great and all, but just curious. Why is he holding a balloon? Who? You're kidding, right? There's literally no one else in the room with the balloon. It's a ghost. Joan claps her hands together in realization. Oh, you mean Hans. Hans is head of this body. <laughs> Staggers up awkwardly, hitting several chairs by accident along the way. He made an animal character balloon. Just curious, whose idea was it to draw a face on Hans' body balloon? Hans, it was Hans. Oh, it was hers. Mine, of course. Everybody's an animu fan. She seems strangely proud about this. Also, it's rude to call him Hans' body. Hans' body. While Hans controls his body, he is it also is semi-sentient and kind of has a personality of its own. It's got human fingers. So to keep track, we call his body Buddy and the head Hans. Buddy? His body sounds like Buddy. Uh, it was Iris' idea, good right? Yeah, 2 out of 10. You get that feeling that Joan and Iris collaborate on these sorts of things often. Okay, okay, but back to my initial question. Why does Buddy have a balloon to begin with? Oh, well, Buddy kind of gets anxious when Hans is around, I bet. There's a little spider back there. So the balloon is meant as a placeholder so he can feel like he's holding it up a head. Buddy attempts to nod in agreement by waving the balloon up, head up and down. You nod back in support and your stomach growls loudly. Maybe we should continue this discussion over food. You nod with more enthusiasm, and Buddy takes the opportunity to go back to drooling. Doodling, sorry. She brings the plate of cookies out once more and puts it on the counter. <sighs> I need click save. Joan continues to eat the cookies from before as you grab one for yourself. So you bite in the chocolate melts into your mouth. Mm -hmm. Feel the tension leave your body with every piece you eat. Joan remembers something and finishes her life back before dusting her hands off. See, why are you eating these cookies? You know this woman already trapped you in the house. Why are you eating the cookies? That's a trap. I almost forgot what I initially meant to talk to you about. You give her a questioning look. The mansion is fairly large and, well, dangerous at times. So I was thinking, yes, I'm already chopped my hand off. You swallow before responding. Yes. Well, it might be a good idea to have someone help you with the investigation. Keep in mind that everyone is equally capable, so base your choice on how much you like or can handle spending time with them, okay? Oh, it's a relationship kind of thing. Also, no one really does anything important around here, so you can pick whoever. Oh, okay. In that case, I guess I want to hang out with. Director's note, Siba and Mero are joint are a joint route, so if you pick, click either, you get both. No, I'm good. I actually want Buddy, if possible. Hey, who's that? Oh, I'm taking. I want. <laughs> Buddy, huh? I'm glad you warmed up to him. It's honestly hard not to with that cute balloon. It's good, right? Buddy walks over shyly. <laughs> Appears that Buddy brought a sketchbook to communicate. He seems to be writing something. 
Nice to meet you. Oh my god, he does a mode of cards. <laughs> that made the correct choice. I hope that you can have fun while we're together. <laughs> Best choice. This is the cutest thing you've ever seen. It's nice to meet you too. I'm sure we'll have a good time. Buddy seems happy and writes something else down. I'm so glad. <laughs> this is <laughs> Buddy suddenly freezes after explaining that he has to occasionally write for Hans. Excuses himself briefly. The clumsy doll hand comes back several minutes later. Someone passing by found my head and then they should be heading over soon. Dark Lord. LOL. Buddy points at a piece of paper on the table excitedly. You read over the message very quickly on only deposit the last line. <laughs> I thought we were looking for Hans. Who's the Dark Lord? He's Chunibyo, you already know. You hear Jones keep a C behind you. Keep a side behind you. Not a sieve. She rubs her temples. You can just, uh, go ahead and ignore that. <laughs> Hans changes his alter ego every name every week or so. Eventually you'll get, you get used to it. Right. Wait a second. The witch snaps her fingers in realization and a nearby bottle explodes. Holy crap. You immediately duck down. Whoa! Oh my gosh, my bad. <laughs> Buddy dusts off a couple of glass shards and you stagger back up. Joan clears her throat. Anyways, what I was going to say is since we no longer have to look for Hans, why don't you take time to hang out with your investigation partner? What the heck? No, my job's done! And Buddy is honestly way cuter than you initially thought. Oh man, this is a getting thick plot. You feel like you lucked out with him as your partner. It seems like you two are getting along fine, so I'm just going to leave for now. Have fun. Oh man. Initially the two of you weren't sure where to start. Quick save thought. <laughs> you were going to draw together, but between you not knowing the mansion's layout and at all and Buddy having no eyes, you couldn't even find the right supplies. You're going to use some of the materials that Buddy uses for letters, but you actually don't know what half of the tools do. You're flipping out through one of the activity magazines when you find a camping section. Apparently neither you nor Buddy have had that experience, any experience. Although frankly you don't particularly mind since you can't stand bugs. But turns out you do have the materials on hand to make some spores with his head. Smurfs! You can't operate the kitchen stove because you need to use a spell. But Buddy's fire ended up doing just fine. You can relate to Moss now, after having to stop yourself repeatedly from trying to put your hands inside of the turquoise fire. Buddy seems to have been both amused and concerned every time. You would actually zone out staring at the flame. Staring at the flame. You, for the most part, feel, felt embarrassed. Then again, you haven't really seen a dull hand before. It isn't your fault that you're so interested, right? The two of you- This better not get fucked. This better not get dirty. <laughs> the two of you feel refreshed after making s'mores. You can feel your bond strengthen. Through the power of investigation of FIRE! You receive a text from Joan, and at the same time, Buddy receives a message to describe from Hans. You wonder what it's about. Turns out stranger who found me is very beautiful, plus way out of my league. Please find my head faster, I look lame with them carrying me. Dark Lord with a date. <laughs> Buddy is waiting at the dining table once more, and you take a seat preemptively. You look down to read Hans' new message, and Hans bragging about his date is somehow ir extremely irritating. Joan apparently shares the same sentiment. She says so she has a pain expression on her face. Ah, uh, must be nice. Good for him. Her voice is extremely monotone. Like me! Somehow the idea that Hans of all people managed to get a date. Good for him. Joan tucks a strand of hair behind her ear. Reminds me of Kaito from Psyche. <laughs> well, I'm incredibly sorry to say that you'll actually have to investigate now that Hans is, you know. Ah, uh, no, that's completely fine. It's here, what I'm here to do after all. Yeah, although, just curious. When you think of a possible date location in the mansion, what comes to mind? Dating, uh, huh. 
Maybe try the patio. Seems like a kind of romantic spot. You hear the kitchen door softly creak open. 